Captain Midnight. We all know the line. Remember, with great power comes great responsibility. It's iconic, one simple phrase that Spider-Man is constantly struggling to live by. Though it was originally written as a caption, which brought to a close Peter Parker's origin story, it went on to become the cornerstone of the character of Uncle Ben, representing the wisdom and simple decency that he imparted to his nephew. So it makes sense that it rubs some Spidey fans the wrong way when neither the phrase or Ben Parker himself made an appearance in Spider-Man Homecoming. Marvel was in a tough spot when it came to Uncle Ben, because even though he's instrumental to the Spider-Man story, going back to him so soon after the Amazing films would just feel wrong. So they opted to do something else entirely. Instead of having a new Uncle Ben give another variation on his power and responsibility speech, Homecoming centers its story around this theme. So sure, Ben Parker may only be referred to vaguely in one scene, but his message remains at the heart of Peter's character arc. Escape me! I'll chase you to the ends of the earth! But first, let's take a step back and think about the phrase itself. With great power comes great responsibility, and how that responsibility usually manifests itself as sacrifice. It's one of the foundations of the Spider-Man character. Compare him to, say, Batman. Bruce Wayne doesn't seem to lose a lot of sleep over disappointing those around him because he's out there beating up criminals every night. That's because, in most depictions of the character, Bruce's entire life is constructed around being Batman, keeping up his facade as Gotham's leading playboy comes in a distant second. But Peter Parker's life is nothing like this. He's constantly trying and failing to find the right balance between his responsibilities to Spider-Man and his responsibilities to those around him. Homecoming goes out of its way to underline this. Take Peter's relationship with Liz Allen, where in that classic Peter Parker style, he's completely unable to make it work due to his responsibilities as Spider-Man. I especially like the scene where Peter and his class are staying in a hotel in Washington DC and Liz invites him to go swimming with everyone. But he's got villainous plans to foil, so he can't. We see him looking down from the roof with a little regret, and there's no denying that he's not been a very good friend or teammate. And the movie goes out of its way to show the toll that takes on him. In a Batman story, Bruce Wayne is rarely, if ever, broken up about missing some benefit or fundraising party, because his life as Bruce Wayne just isn't as important to him. In Homecoming, Peter is constantly weighing what he believes his responsibility to help people in the costume is, while trying not to let everyone in his life outside of it down. And it's this tension that separates Spider-Man from most heroes. Captain America is never worried about standing up his date. For Iron Man, being a superhero and his billionaire genius self are basically just one and the same. But for Peter, the dangers of the vulture getting away or letting an innocent person get hurt is just as real and immediate as, say, being late for the academic decathlon. Homecoming goes out of its way to emphasize that, showing, instead of telling us, what with great power comes great responsibility looks like in action. And he's found it. A rubber glove sandwich. One of the criticisms I've seen about Homecoming is that Peter Parker fails too often in it, and that the movie is just a series of Spider-Man falling flat on his face over and over again. I think this criticism is a little overblown, but it is true that Peter fails many times in this movie. At different points he gets beaten up, outsmarted, and beaten up some more. But I see that aspect of the film as a feature, not a bug. In many ways, the character is about how tough it is to do the right thing, even when you try, and the toll that that can take on a person. But he continues to do it anyway, out of a sense of responsibility. So to me, a Spider-Man film that has the character fail over and over again is a movie that understands the character and his motto. Take the climax of the film, the fight on the camouflaged Avengers jet. What I like about this is that unlike some past Spider-Man movies, in the final battle he's not pulling off graceful aerodynamic moves. He's barely hanging on for his life. In fact, in a behind the scenes video, the special effects team even talk about making that decision. But what we found, which was more convincing, uh, was to just play into the fact that, look, there's someone on top of the plane, he's trying to hold on, 
and the vulture is just trying to knock him off. He's just trying to survive. I think that's important because during the battle, we see Peter try desperately to redirect the plane where it would do the least amount of damage, risking his life to make sure no one else gets hurt. If we had an ultra confident Spider-Man who was fighting the vulture with ease, him making sure to redirect the plane would be no big deal. But by making the fight an ugly battle for survival, it really underlines Peter's sense of responsibility to the people of New York, and even at the end of the fight, to Vulture himself. Anyone can be a hero when it's easy. I think this is a problem that Superman stories face a lot. It's like, yeah, he does great things, but he makes it look like a walk in the park. In Homecoming, Spider-Man struggles at doing pretty much everything. The movie even calls him out on it sometimes. Can I give you some advice? Hmm? You gotta get better at this part of the job. But I think the fact that it doesn't come easy to him, but that he does it anyway, tells us how seriously he takes his responsibility underneath all those quips. Spider-Man Homecoming is a fairly breezy watch. It's funny, likable, and nothing all that traumatic happens. It kinda just feels like a few months in the average life of Peter Parker. But to equate that to shallowness would be a mistake, I think. Because at the end of the day, it's a film about the character trying to prove himself, and to show that he's worthy of all this power he's been given. Uncle Ben may not be in this movie, and in fact I have no idea if he'll ever be featured in the MCU. But I think you can feel his well-known phrase from beginning to end in this film. And I really hope that this is a theme that the new Spider-Man series continues to emphasize as it goes on, even in his appearances in other MCU movies. Oh, but if they do recast him, they should probably get Tobey Maguire because that'd be amazing. Hey guys, thanks for watching. Just so you know, I will finally be covering Thor Ragnarok in my video next week. I'm pretty excited about that. But beyond Thor, I want to know, what do you guys think I should do a video on? I'll be checking out the comments below.